Ben Baskin, NFL reporter for Sports Illustrated with the season ready to roll. And it's all about prediction time. And certainly Ben uh, is all about that. SI's 2017 preview issues uh, picks are out. And Ben Baskin joins us here on Big Board Sports 104.5 Team ESPN Radio. Good morning, Ben. Uh, good morning, guys. How you guys doing today? We are great, great man. absolutely. And uh, how can you not be? Right? It's amazing. Next week, this time next week, <laughs> I know. I love we're going to be in game mode. No more <laughs> preseason stuff, Ben. I mean, right? There's got to be a level of excitement for everyone, including yourself, with the regular season right around the corner. Absolutely. I'm going to getting forward, looking forward to not having to watch uh, preseason games anymore. It's uh, getting a little tiring watching that. Uh, third and fourth stringers it's one week away the off season kind of flew by but yeah only a week out all right you have you made predictions on every team oh uh, well andy benoit made the predictions on every team in our in our magazine andy uh um on the si for mmqb's peter king's uh mmqb team he he's the one that did all the uh predictions for the uh preview magazine but um i agree with a lot of his picks um I, but I, I have not gone through one by one. He predicted everyone's record, uh, team by team for the whole season. What would you, what would you say if I, if I ran down our regional teams of interest very quickly here? Give me a win loss yeah. total, uh, starting with, with our, our number one regional team of in, interest, and that will be the Giants. I, I see the Giants winning the East this year. I, I really do. I think they're going to win 10 or 11 games. Um, I, I, I think they're a better team than they were last year. I think the offense has improved, obviously, with the addition of Brandon Marshall and the addition of Evan Ingram. I think the running game can only get better because um, it was just so atrocious. Um, I would expect their play calling to get better. But um, I do see them winning the East. I wouldn't be surprised if the Cowboys uh, took it again. But um, I, 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 I'm, I have high hopes for the Giants this year. What about New England with the injury to Edelman over the weekend, torn ACL, done for the year? How does that affect any any predictions that one would have made on the Patriots going and winning the Super Bowl again? So I am more, uh, I think most people kind of are downplaying the Edelman injury to an extent that I think is a little bit too much. I, I agree that the Patriots will not obviously crumble without Julian Edelman, but I've said for the last couple of years that Julian Edelman is the most important player on the Patriots, not named Tom Brady. I think, as you've seen last year when Rob Gronkowski went out, who is maybe the best tight end ever, but that offense can still kind of move on without Gronk. Um, when Julian Edelman went down two years ago, that offense really fell apart. Um, they, they kind of crumbled. Tom Brady looked like a worse quarterback, um, and it took them – really a long time to get used to Edel- Edelman and, and Tom Brady are, are very good friends. They uh, have thrown together every off season for the last eight years. They're on the same page, like at uh, every play. So uh, I do think it's going to take a little bit of time for that offense to kind of get uh, their bearings. But when you look at the, the weapons they have in the receiving core from Chris Hogan to Danny Amendola and addition of uh, Brandon Cooks and you got Malcolm Mitchell who's, could be uh, improved, um, and obviously you still have Gronk. That I think eventually, in a couple weeks in, they'll probably get it figured out. I, I don't think in the long run it's going to uh, affect their season all that much. I'd be surprised if they won less than twelve games. Um, but I would see. I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little bit of a, a slow start for them this year, uh, different from from previous seasons. NFL reporter for Sports Illustrated, Ben Baskin, with us. SI's 2017 preview issue uh, hit the Internet yesterday. The issue itself on newsstands uh, you can find Thursday, and you can check out even more scouting reports, expert analysis, positional rankings, in-depth reports, and full-season predictions from the NFL experts at SI and the Monday Morning Quarterback at SI.com slash NFL. Uh, again, that double issue hits newsstands on Thursday. Ben, uh, let's, I'll throw the other two teams at you. Two teams yep. which not even the, the fan bases have high hopes, and that is the, the Jets, uh, and the Bills. Well, you got two of the, the, the worst teams in the NFL right there that I, I, I have, I, I agree with you in, in all regards. And they're two teams that I really don't know exactly what they're doing, especially the Bills. The Jets, it seems pretty clear that they're tanking or, um, the management is, is at least trying to throw the towel on the season. Obviously, the players will never tank. But the Bills are a little bit more confusing because they keep trading assets for 
for really nothing. Um, you, they, you, they get rid of Sammy Watkins, who they traded two draft picks to move up uh, and to get it out of the fourth overall pick, and they trade him for EJ Gaines and a second rounder. They trade Ronald Darby. They trade Reg, Reggie Raglan, who hasn't played a down for the team. Um, they're, they're left with zero first or second round picks from their 2013 to, through 2015 drafts. Um, they have a quarterback that's going to be starting week one that I hadn't heard of four days ago. I'm going to be honest there. And Nathan Peterman, because they have their other quarterbacks have had concussions. So it, they're kind of in a weird place where it, it, they're not, it doesn't, it just doesn't, nothing really makes sense as to what they're doing. Um, I, and I, I, I don't see them winning more than three or four games. Um, and I think that will be uh, uh, an optimistic prediction. I do like Tyrod Taylor more than most people do. I think he throws a really nice deep ball, and um, if you put some weapons around him, he could be a, a, a competent quarterback. But I just I can't see that offense or <laughs> that defense doing really much uh, there. So and and then you and then you go to the Jets, who may be even worse. They're 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 just bereft of talent. They don't have a QB, they don't have any wide receivers, they don't really have a secondary, although I do, here's my favorite stats I've stumbled upon, I do, do believe that Josh McCown is the perfect Jets quarterback, because if you look from 2002, when Josh McCown entered the NFL, the Jets QB rating for all of Jets quarterbacks from 2002 to last year was 77.8. Josh McCown's QB rating was 78.2 in his career, while the completion percentage for the Jets quarterbacks are 59.1. His is 59.5. <laughs> so he's pretty much the, the the average Jets quarterback for the last 15 years. So the Jets fans can pretty much expect the quarterback to be exactly what they've seen for the last decade and a half. So with that said, it's not going to be good. That will make him so, happy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it won't be good. It won't. There, nothing's nothing's going well for the Jets right now. Um, Quincy Anunua is out for the season. They 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 lose Brandon Marshall. There's just they lose Eric Decker. There's just really very little talent on offense, and they have a defense that underperformed last year. Hopefully, the defense will be better. Um, but there's some players there. But I the Jets the Jets will be lucky if they if they win more than two games this year. Well, it's it's a week one matchup, right? <laughs> Jets and Bills. Exactly. It's a week one matchup that we're all looking forward to. Somebody's going to get a win coming out of that exactly. game right so there. Someone, someone will come out with a, with a tough. At least, at least one uh, team will start on a, on a good, optimistic way to the start of the season. And uh, SI's 2017 preview issue picks the New England Patriots over Chris Honorado's yep. Green Bay Packers in the Super Bowl. Yeah. I, and I, 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 I would agree with that to an extent. I, 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 that would be if you had to, you had to pick two teams that seems like the, um, the, the two most obvious, the two, the two best teams in each conference. I wouldn't be shocked if the Steelers ended up upsetting the Patriots in a, a conference championship game. And I, and I wouldn't be shocked if, um, the Falcons had another good season. I really wouldn't be shocked if the Giants had another had a good season and, and found themselves in a Super Bowl. I would love to see a Giants Patriots uh, part three. Um, I think that would be a, a fun one, and I think um, I, I wouldn't be surprised there. I think there's a few there's a few teams in the NFC that are that are in the running. I do think the Packers do have the best team. They have the best offense. Um, as long as the defense is a little bit better than it was last year, um, you know, they do have the best team. But I, those are the three teams. I wouldn't be surprised. Giants, Falcons. Packers. I could see either of those in a, in a Super Bowl. Ben, well, you, one quick thing before we let you go, man. You wrote a couple of great pieces from Vegas. You were there for the fight, Mayweather McGregor, and then the piece you wrote the next day about being at McGregor's after party until 6 a.m. If you go to Ben's <laughs> Twitter, you can find uh, both articles right there. Uh, how was the day after that? Like, I know you're not far removed from college, but what was the recovery time <laughs> after hanging out with Connor until 6 a.m.? I will. That was that was a tough one. I um I, I I had I got home at probably about 7 a.m. because the cab line after the party was probably 50 people deep. Um, so I had to wait about 45 minutes for a cab. But um, so I got home around 7 a.m. and I, I set my alarm for 10 a.m. So I slept three hours. I got up and I and I wrote a whatever it was 2,500 word story. 
Um, we got it up in the in the afternoon. But, yeah, no, I, I, I will say when I – and then I flew the red eye home that night. So I had a midnight flight, and I, I, I couldn't – I had a, one of those seats that doesn't recline, so I did not sleep very well. So I, I will say I slept about 14 hours when I got home on uh, Monday night. So the recovery was good there. But, yeah, no, that uh, that party was, was unlike any – Thing that the kind of in the whole that's my, my main takeaway from uh four days in Las Vegas is that Conor McGregor has the most passionate fan base I've ever seen of any athlete in my career. And it's it, it, they, they his fans uh love him in a way that I haven't seen. They it, it was it was truly remarkable to see, and he loves them back. It, it was a very genuine mutual, like mutual love there between him and his fan base, and that's really. When I look back years from now on, on that Vegas weekend, that's the thing that's going to stand out to me is how passionate that Irish fan base was and um, how much they really connected with each other. It was, it was remarkable to see. Ben Baskin, NFL reporter, Sports Illustrated. Appreciate a few minutes here on Big Board Sports in Albany, my man. I appreciate you guys having me.